This is Fred Beck from Fred Toys Fighting. I'm in Nashville today. I have to say this is the second time we're doing one of these long interviews because news changes rather quick. I'm joined by Mams Taylor at his ranch today. Mams, we'll just go straight into it since it's a short time here today. The Aiden Ross situation, what's the new information on that? Um, Aiden and I had a nice long chat and um, I think all is resolved. We just, uh, I think... <sighs> I think there was a misunderstanding. I approached Aiden um, through I approached Aiden through his management when he started doing this fighting stuff and said, "Let's talk and sit down and see if there's a way we can work together which would mutually benefit, where you guys have safe, sanctioned events and you know um, and we work together essentially. And somehow it seems that. Um, Someone was stirring the pot, saying that I said something completely different, like we shit on them and, and uh, you know, and something like that. So then he came online and said, oh, yeah, they're scared of us and all that. So there was an unnecessary... And we were like, what? What's this about? Because, you know, we were actually supportive. And I made it clear to Aiden, I'm like, we're all for competition. Competition brings out the best. Um, in in our space and in other spaces. My favorite era of WWE was when WWE and WCW had the ratings, the Monday Night Ratings Wars mm -hmm. um, with Nitro and Raw. And I don't know if you watched that, but it was by far the biggest ratings they ever had, the most people that watched, and it brought out the best in them. So I really hope, I hope that they can become competition and we support them in that fully. So this story of like us being insecure and all that about them being around is complete nonsense because we want more people to do significant things in this space, but we want it done safely. So nothing reflects poorly on us because, look, these fights we have in Nashville, uh, you're not required to do MRIs. You're not required to do brain scans. We do them anyway. We go above and beyond. Standard. No, it's not standard. That's what I'm telling you. For us, it's standard because we have a higher safety standard than than almost anyone else in the combat sports space because we know we're scrutinized. So, and to be honest with you, more importantly than that, we don't want anything bad to happen. We care about the fighters' safety. We care about their health, and we genuinely want them to be safe and and looked after. That's important to us. Um, but yeah, I think I think. Um, that was that part was a misunderstanding what i said to aiden is dude like competition is fine if there's a free agent out there and we both try to get this person on our card and you win or we, i win or who we win or whatever it is um that's fair yeah there's no issue but you don't take a contracted champion from another organization and put him on your card and he then, um, then, then he said, no, you're right. We were told, he said we were told that he didn't have a contract from Dean. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, then it just blew up. So I just said, you know, I thought it was best for us to get on the phone. HS actually uh, put us in touch and um, we spoke and it was a really positive conversation um, Nothing negative at all. It was really cool. And sometimes that's all it takes is just to get two people on the phone or meet in person. And you're like, oh, no, this isn't what I meant. This isn't what I said. This isn't what the intention was. And then um, then it's all gravy. So it looks, looks like it's all okay. All smooth sailing from now on, which is uh, definitely nice to see. I'm always a big Aiden Ross fan. So, yeah, that's cool. It's so annoying. I went out the house when you were speaking to him, which is a bit annoying. It's cool to say hi. Anyway. You're always eavesdropping on my conversations. <laughs> Anyway, um, let's talk about this then. Just before we get to the Misfits National Card, Jake Paul and Mike Tyson happening in July. Your thoughts on this? I know there's a lot of haters, a lot of lovers. Where do you rank it? Business-wise, it's it's a clever move. I know they're going to make a lot of money from that. They may, they've made a lot of money from that with Netflix. And um, look, it's it's something you think I respect it as a business move, but at the same time... For me personally, I'm um, when I initially heard it, it made me upset because I love Mike so much. Fred, 
in my opinion, and and a lot of a lot of purists will disagree, but some people will agree. Um, if Mike Tyson, if 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 he had stayed with Rooney, um, I think he would have he would have been the greatest of all time, undisputed. You know, I don't think I don't I I don't know how anyone can argue against that because when he left Rooney. It was because he didn't want to be told what to do. He didn't want to be told to train as hard as they wanted him to train. Mm -hmm. So he took shortcuts and he was partying and he stopped doing the tremendous footwork he was doing. He stopped doing the tremendous head movement he was doing and he was relying solely on power. Customato would have never had that, but unfortunately he passed. But Rooney was still there and then Mike was like, he kind of went off the rails. And his power did get him through the rest of his fights until it didn't. Mm -hmm. Until people were like, okay, there's there's a code here. We can we can crack it. Um, and obviously Buster Douglas, who I still think, no, no discredit to Buster Douglas, but I still think he got a 13 count when he fell, so he should have lost that fight. Um, but yeah, I'm an avid Mike Tyson fan. He's you a legend. Him? I have met him a really? couple of times, Where? yeah. Uh, in LA. Okay. And um, look, I... I love the guy, but I also, um, I don't want the end of his legacy. He tarnished his legacy himself through certain things and partying and maybe hanging around with the wrong people and all of that stuff. Um, but he's recovered his legacy where he's just an icon and you accept the things he's done, like the podcast and the, um, all the other stuff, the, the, the movie, the, the stand up and, uh, his show and all that stuff. I think I think he's brought himself back, uh, where he's a respected icon, and that's the end of it. And I think he should let that lie. And he had a fight four years ago against Roy Jones, which was an exhibition. They weren't allowed to punch each other in the head, you know. Um, I think he held back. I think he was probably gonna, if that was a real fight, I think he would have won that. Um, but you know, I think that was that was a good way to go out, you know. Um, I don't want his last fight being him flat on his back because of Jake Paul. Do you think he'll end that way? I I fear he might because, look, when you're 58, it's different to being 54. It's different to being 56. It's You know, every year <laughs> when you're in your 50s, you're aging, you're losing uh, speed, you're losing coordination. Of course, power is the last thing to go. Um, but let's see what happens. Let's see what the rules are. Um, and if it's if it's an exhibition bout or if it's a real bout or or whatever, you know, but look, at the end of the day, you, you know, I, I hope I wish him well. I hope he doesn't get hurt. He's an older guy. He's a, a very tough older guy. But, um, yeah, it's not an ideal sort of way for him to go out unless he somehow knocks out Jake in the first round or something, you know, but it's tough, man, when you've got youth on your side and Jake trains hard. He's not just a YouTuber, you know? Mm. KSI is not just a YouTuber. They, they, when they box, they they put in a lot of work, these guys. And um, that's not to be underestimated. Is the KSI Jake Paul fight dead in, the, dead in the water? I don't know. I mean, at this point, people should stop using it as um, a thumbnail, Fred. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> because I think just make the fight and then oh my gosh that fight would do so many views it's insane I think it's insane I think then their weight when they're both healthy and fit um, is just there's too much of a discrepancy so you know whoever gives up the advantage is at a massive disadvantage so it's a, it's a tough fight to make and it's becoming tougher because um, Jake's put on a lot of weight um, over the last year hasn't he yeah his last fight was quite heavy, so yeah, we'll see. Keep your fingers crossed. Um, one thing before we touch on the Misfits card is the Dean the Great situation. What's the situation of Dean the Great now? Um, Dean's under contract. We've said to him, we're very supportive of you um, healing your mental health, making sure you're in a good place. Advise that he seeks professional help because you don't want to see alarming tweets like that, you know. Um, we advise that, and I hope he gets the help he needs to be of sound mind and body. And um, we've said the door is open. When you're ready to fight again, you'll be fighting under misfits as per your contract. And we'll honor that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and if, of course, listen, no one can force you to box. 
No one can force you to box, so I would never put pressure on him to fight if he isn't hasn't got the mental capacity to to absorb all all that comes with a fight camp and everything else and and being back under those lights then you know of course he doesn't have to fight but if he wants to fight then of course he you know um he has he has a contract with us and and uh you know would we'd like to see it out how many fights are left is it two there's two fights two left fights yeah left. okay um but then when dean fights gonna miss it will it be awkward or do you think it'll be pushed aside listen it's yesterday's news yeah you know um, it would be nice, I think, at the end of the day, I, I think it's very clear he didn't, he didn't make the right choices. Um, they didn't come from a place of, um, truth. There wasn't, there wasn't integrity in those decisions, but hopefully my hope is honestly, um, all of us make mistakes. The important part about that predictably i'm going to say this is that you learn from them and you grow but the problem is if you don't learn and don't grow you're going to repeat those same mistakes and until you know you get stung worse because there's always consequences for mistakes and and i've made a few frederick in my life but i try not to repeat the same mistake if i can help it you know it's just about overcoming your ego and seeing something for what it is and saying okay look maybe just ask yourself, was I wrong here? And and try and ask with a true um, and an honest sort of self-reflection, you know? Was I wrong here? Did I do something that was messed up? Did I do wrong by people? How can I make it right? Do I want to make it right? Do I want to become a better person? Do I want to become uh, more mature in my, you know, uh, as a man, uh, as a fighter, as a person, as a human being? Do I want to become more reliable? Do I want to have these attributes? Or, you know, some people don't care. But you hope that when bad things happen or um, when when lessons are presented in front of you, you've got to try to be present and, and learn from them, you know? Mm, certainly. And then just to finish up, one of the last things I want to talk about is the Misfits National Card, which is why we're here. A few, two fights have been added to the card, which I think is, I guess, will probably be the most fan favorite fights. We'll start with Modi and Vitali. They had their face-to-face with Keemstar on Kick yesterday. I thought it went quite well. I thought this is going to be kind of the, the viral fight of the night, I feel. They've had a fan-favourite fight. I think so. I think um, I think it's the streaming audience that they have. And uh, and there's a storyline there with Neon and everything else. And, and um, I'm interested to see how it goes. Modin, of course, they've had one fight each, haven't they? Mm. Modine won a fight he had. Um, well, Vitali fought Christian Hamby two years ago, actually, on the show's for, on the show star card, yeah, and that was a draw. And then Modine fought General G. So I guess Vitali's had more experience, but it was a long time ago, two years ago, where Modine will be more fresh. Let's see what happens. It's going to be a fun fight. I don't think you're going to see too much technical boxing in that one. <laughs> the hardcore boxing fans won't like it, but... um. Neon as well, he'll be there in attendance in Vitali's corner. Oh, sorry, no, in Modine's corner. Yeah, yeah, that's what he says, so let's uh, let's wait and see. It'll be good to see him. Mm. And then Taylor Holder, being last minute added to the card. He's from Nashville, will sell a few tickets. Yeah. Tell me about Taylor. He hasn't fought since he fought Gibb as well. It's been a long layoff. Laid back, unfortunately, had some uh, medical issues come up. You know, he was very gutted because he's seen those eye emojis everywhere all the time whenever there's a Misfits announcement, and We've been speaking for a while to get him in the ring, but um, you know, hopefully he'll he'll tend to those issues and um, he'll be okay, and we'll get him back on. And then naturally, uh, Taylor Holder uh, came up, and um, actually, I was like, Keem, what, what do you have any suggestions? Like, get Taylor. I was like, call Taylor, and he's like, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. You know, and um, excited to see him, what he can do here. You know, I think I think uh, it's been a long time coming. Will the lights and the pressure get to him again, or will he overcome that and uh, and become a great in misfits? He certainly has an opportunity to do so. Has the stage now, and uh, and you know, listen, DWG of the Earth will do his best to stop that from taking shape. Mm. It's funny because we got Taylor Holder's arch rival Bryce Hall coming down. I was a meter in the studio yesterday, and then Kurt. Calls, he FaceTimes. He says, "I'm rolling up with 
Bryce Hall and his manager, and we're going to see what happens. So uh, Bryce Hall will be there. Do you reckon he'll kick off between Bryce and Taylor if they're both in attendance? We will keep the uh, we'll keep the uh, fans safe and you know make sure we have the security in place and nothing too bad happens. Of course, we've got a lot of security for this event. Nate Diaz is attending um, with Chris Avia, so <laughs> I think Chase is coming too. Who knows what's going to happen? Anyway, Jake Boswick versus Chris Avila. Love this this is a very Jake Boswick. He sparred Jake Paul in the past. That's how he got kind of more well known in the scene. He's a big bare knuckle fighter as well. He's trained or managed by BJ Flores. And then Chris Avila, he last fought on the Jake Paul versus Nate Diaz undercard back in July. He had a very good win over Jeremy Stevens back then. He beat Paul Bamba, Misfits, and New Orleans. Look at the knowledge. I'm pretty good, huh? I know I know the things. This is your business. <laughs> you you should know all this stuff. Yeah, true. Anyway, what do you make of this fight? And is I it a fight is it a fight of the night contender? I love this fight, Fred. I do. I think it is a fight of the night contender for sure. The two tournament fights are going to be very interesting as well. Really, really interesting. I'm Baby Hulk against Joey Knight. That's Joey Knight was messaging me today. He sent me like a 30-second voice note saying, Fred, I've been checking the weather in Nashville. Do I bring trousers? Do I bring shorts? And I was like, yeah, bring shorts. The weather's really nice. It's really warm. No need for jumpers. And then I walk out of the house today, and it's absolutely freezing. So, yeah, I have set Joey Knight up there. But anyway, Joey Knight versus Baby Hulk. It's a very, very interesting Banger. fight. Banger. Baby Hulk fought on the Street Beefs fights all the way back in the day got, got right. over 50 80 million views right. rates in the views so yeah right. and joey knight's become quite well known himself to be fair does a lot of football content he brings in the new audience yeah i think so and he does he's been promoting really well on his channel and everything and um i'm excited for that fight i'm very excited for um yudi gang versus uh ray mu little cray cray mm. that's gonna be a banger as well both of them i think the winner of that fight has a very good chance to to really progress well in the tournament. Do the winners of those two, those two fights fight the winner? So does the winner of Yudi Yang versus Cray Cray fight Baby Hulk and Joey Knight winner? I think so. It would make sense. I think so. Because Walid is fighting Ace Musa. Yeah. And then who else is there? And then you've got the Argentinian King yes. versus the other guy. Yeah. So. Should be good. Should be good indeed. Who do um, you think will end up in the finals? Uh, well, I want to see how Lil Cray Cray boxes. We know what Yudi Yang's got. I want to see how Bobby Holt goes. I think that the favourite is definitely... The well, lead is for definitely one of the favourites, just because you've seen so much of him. And then Ace Moose... Oh, I was going to say Ace Moose, but they're fighting each other, aren't they? Yeah. Ace Moose is very, very good as well. Uh, I reckon Joey and will lead in the finals, I reckon. Really? I think so. Interesting. That's fair. Would you not? Would you agree? I thought you don't make predictions. I haven't. I just said who I think will be in the final. We're not winning or anything like that, you know? Okay, but <laughs> for those people to be in the finals, they have to win? I'll just, I'll just burn six bridges there, fighters. Hopefully no one clips this and puts it on the IFN Maybe Twitter. Pissed right now as we speak. <laughs> Little guy running around. Oh, wow. <laughs> Fred, just uh, should be known that uh, you were my eighth pick to be in the tournament, and then um, you bottled it. Okay, that's, really, that's, that's <laughs> definitely one way to put it there. This no. will be getting cut. What what happened was uh, I was convincing Fred. I was offering him a very handsome payday because I think it would be great to see him. It in. was the highest paid fighter in the whole tournament by far. That's not true. <laughs> um, now you're burning my bridges. Um, but I think uh, one thing he said to me, and then this is what you said. You said, um, look, Mams, it's not going to make me happy and I just want to be happy. And I'm really happy doing what I do. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I got a, so I left you alone after that, didn't I? Yeah. I've been all right since then. No, it's one of those things, it's when I was last here in Nashville about three, four weeks ago. It's one of those things where it's like, now I only do things if I, if I, if I want to do them sort of thing. Now, now I've got kind of the business and my career running here through the Fred Rock fighting business. And if someone's offered you a crazy check, it's something you don't really want to do or something make you unhappy, then I just want to do it. I just want to do things now. I've been through a lot through all this YouTube stuff, so now I just want to have a little, just enjoy it, you know, no, enjoy a bit more. I respect that. I respect that. And um, Pineda? Is he coming? You hope he's, uh, his mum's doing okay? <laughs> Dude. That's another t-shirt. That's definitely another t-shirt design. I can give him a free one. Um, a couple more things before we do do wrap this up. Uh, we got the women's fight as well. The new women's champion. What do you make of this fight between Alexei Grace and Nikki Aru? 
think it's a great fight. I think Alexia Grace is not to be underestimated. Um, she works really hard. She had her first fight against someone much more experienced than her. A lot of people thought she won that fight, um, or at least it was a draw, a lot of people think. Um, and now she's got this fight against uh, Nikki Roo, who's 3-0. and um, And she's she's... She works really hard as well. I'm I'm excited for that fight. I think it'll be better than what people anticipate. Mm, really good. Nikki Aru's definitely experienced. And the main event, we've almost got Fox fighting Evil Hero and Most Wanted. This is a new addition. He's almost one upping what KSI did back in the day on the first Misfits. Does he have to beat both men or any one of them? How are the rules working in this one? And how many tags do they get? He has to beat one of them. They're gonna tag out and the you know, the they have a massive cardio advantage over him. Like, you can go 100% and then tag out, you know, whereas in a boxing one-on-one fight, you can't go 100% for three or four rounds. Otherwise, it's very rare to be able to do that. That's, you know, an unusual, unusually high level of fitness that's, you know, inhuman, to, to be honest, like to go 100% for four rounds straight. Um, so they have that advantage over him, and that's a big advantage. But Fox... Is he the chosen one? Is he the next superstar? He's got the platform right now to try and establish himself as such. And that's that's basically, I saw something great in him um, a while ago, obviously, and, and brought him into the Misfits family. And then, uh, you know, he overperformed against uh, Spartan. Spartan's a tough guy, you know, a lot of strong will. And Fox came out on top. So... Most people were picking Spartan to win that fight, and they said he's uh, Fox has bitten off more than he could chew, but he proved us all wrong. I know Fox's performance there was very good. I went into Spartan down at his gym, and he was I felt a bit sorry for him. He was absolutely gutted, but yeah, we'll see him back he, in the ring soon. He basically retired from boxing after seeing that. <laughs> <laughs> That no, I'm joking. I'm joking. No, easy. It's an easy. Uh, I've wanted to make you versus Fox ever for you for like a long time now. Imagine Mams being like two friends have to fight each other, forcing you to fight. I'm like Mams. I don't want to. We're friends. We're friends. Fox is like, yeah, Fred's my friend as well. We don't want to fight Fred. And Mams like, no, you're fighting. You're friends, but you don't be friends for like you know for twelve minutes in a ring, and then you can be friends again. It's not mm. a big deal. Mm. It'd be interesting. Um, and then one last thing: Is KSI coming? Any news on that? Would JJ be in attendance? Yeah, uh, I believe so. Yeah. Did you see his new fitness shape on Twitter recently? Looking a little bit chubby. The fat Neek is back. Um, hey, I, and Deji look at looking a little bit podgy nowadays. They're enjoying the good life, man. <laughs> Give them a break. Now he can fight Jake Paul. Now he's at the right weight. I think he'd have to be at the right weight and fit and strong <laughs> and and it's not the sort of weight you want to have. Uh, carrying into a boxing match, is it, Fred? No. I thought he's, is he not training with Alexis at Shoe Fighters now? Yeah, yeah. I think he's just been um, he's just been eating a lot more than. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's just been enjoying himself, you know, and he deserves it. He's worked really hard, so let him have a break, and when he's ready, he'll be back. Will the Misfits 14 card be announced straight after 13? Uh, yeah. So it will be announced on, on the night. I'm working on that. Okay. Okay, sounds good then. All right, well, Mams, appreciate it, yeah. We'll see you next week.